Welcome back to the Way In Podcast. I'm your host, Hayden McCarthy, and I'm back with... Joe Mansfield and Matt Slater. We're back after nine months, and we're here to talk about the Andrew Rees Jr. and Anthony Joshua rematch. The main undercard is all heavyweight. Joe, do you want to talk us through it? Yeah, so the first fight on the night is Magomed Rasul Majidov. Apologies if I've butchered that name. Against Tom Little. What do you boys think of the fight and how it will go? Majidov's had a very long and successful amateur career. Um, I wouldn't be fooled by the fact that he's only fought once. Um, but for me, I think on Majidov's debut, he's rocked early, but recovered well and learnt uh, a lot from it. And I, th- I don't know, I just think after three knockout losses uh, in a row, there'll be question marks over Little's chin. And I think he'll do well to make it to a decision. So I think Majidov will win by knockout. Yeah, I agree. I think um, Majidov is definitely going to win. It's his second professional fight. He didn't start in the way he wanted to, but Tom Little is just a journeyman and he, he should get him out of there, really. Yeah, you don't expect much from Tom Tom Little. Ten wins, seven defeats really shows his quality. Although Majidov is, has only fought once professionally, you would expect him to deal with Tom Little pretty easily. Um, yeah, he's had an illustrious career as an amateur and much is expected of him as a heavyweight, so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. I think also uh, Little's been knocked by David Price recently and David Price is known as a journeyman, not too much quality, so I think that says a lot as well. So next on the card then after that is Filip Hugovic against Eric Molina. Hugovic is a Croatian prospect coming up against a known fighter in Molina who's faced Wilder and Joshua. How do you think that one goes? Well, Molina's got the experience over him, but... Hugovic is a good young fighter, nine fights, nine wins, seven knockouts. His quality is there, and I feel like he'll be able to deal with Eric Mina pretty nicely. Yeah, I agree. I think um, he's got the power, the youth, um, and I think he's just a class fighter. I think he'll win by knockout. I'm not not too sure uh, how much the veteran will have to offer, to be honest. Yeah, we saw um, when Molina fought Wilder that he did manage to rock Wilder at one point during that fight. So maybe he could be that chin check for Hugovic as a prospect and we can see how he advances in the heavyweight division. This is definitely Hugovic's biggest test as a heavyweight, um, but you, you really can't see him coming into many problems. He, he's suited to a fight like Molina and you'd expect him to pretty deal with him. What round would you think you'd he'll take him? I think probably in the mid to late rounds. I think Molina's capable as a fighter and can avoid him early. Hugovic isn't really a huge puncher, but he's known as El Animal, so he is a bit of a beast, so you can expect him to come forward constantly. He did well as an amateur in the Olympics, claiming a bronze medal there in Rio, so you can expect him to do well in the fight. I think it'll be mid-round. Um, Hugovic has got the reach and size advantage uh, over the opponent, um, but Molina's only fought once since serving a two-year ban, so I think that'll show his toll. Then next up, freshly cleared from his drugs ban, is Dillian White, who takes on Marius Wack. It's a short notice bout, but I think it's a good one for Dillian White to get him back in the ring. I think he should win by knockout against Wack, who's pretty past it now after stoppage defeats to the likes of Povetkin. I think White will get him out there pretty early in rounds around four to six. What do you think, Halen? Yeah, it's it's again the, the heavyweight the the, the undercard is it's, it's a nice undercard there'll be good fights and this is another one which we should see a knockout and that's what you want to see when you're watching an underca- a, a heavyweight undercard wax not had the most illustrious career losing to many of the main heavyweights in the division and you can see him getting another loss on his card against Dillian White yeah I agree I think uh, White's just the better fighter I think in every aspect so I think it'll be a mid-round knockout um, quite comfortably for him as well, I think. Could could a win for Dillian White and possibly a win for Anthony Joshua see them come up against each other? Um, yeah, that's definitely a possibility. White could call for an all-British clash. He's had good wins over Oscar Rivas and Joseph Parker along with Derek Chisora. But Wack isn't really the person to beat to call him out. It's just good that he's keeping active. Wack hasn't really been the same since he lost to Klitschko but he later tested positive after that fight so he then knew why his chin was so good in that clash I think Dillian White could prove too much and possibly in dramatic fashion yeah I think an all all British showdown will be good especially with the Wilder Fury 
I think it'll be good for British boxing fans to see another fight back in the UK. And it's well like this one. Joshua's fighting in Saudi Arabia and it shows how much power money has. So I think it'll be good to see an all-British fight in Britain again. So then the last of the undercard fights is Alexander Povetkin against Michael Hunter. It's the chief support to the main event. It should be a 50-50 clash with both men coming in at six foot two and weighing in similar weights. So it should be a good fight. They both come forward and let their hands go. Halen, what do you think? I can't call this fight. It's too close. Both fighters are great fighters. They've both suffered defeats in their career as well, so they know what it's like to lose. Both the same height. They're so similar, and Michael Hunt just has the reach advantage. Advantage, But I, I, I can't call this fight. It's going to be. It's the fight I'm most looking forward to on this undercard. Yeah, same with me. I think it's interesting, because... Um, Six foot two is relatively small for heavyweight, but they're they're similar, uh, so it'll be interesting to see. But I think they're both experienced at different stages of their career. Obviously, Povetkin's forty now, so he's getting on a bit, and Hunter's had the experience in the London Olympics. Um, but I think Povetkin will win. I think knockout. I think he's he's a very good boxer, good on his feet, and I think it'll be tenth round knockout. For me, it's the fight of the night in terms of action. I think both men come forward and come to fight. They both let their hands go. Hunter is a very good fighter, only losing once, and that was to the great Alexander Usyk at cruiserweight. And then Povetkin's also only lost to the world's elite. So it really is a pick and match up, and I'm not sure which way it goes. I am leaning towards Hunter on points, though. Yeah, I'm saying that Hunter has a defeat on his record, but that was at the cruiserweight level. He's yet to lose at heavyweight. He hasn't fought some of the, the greats that Povetkin has fought, but he's shown his quality at the heavyweight, and I think he could show it again tonight. As he certainly relished his underdog tag, beating the likes of Bacoli and recently Sergei Kuzmin, but now this is a different level of opponent. Povetkin is a quality operator, amateur standout Olympic gold medalist, so you can't. it's difficult to pick against him, but the key factor in Hunter's favour is age. Povetkin's coming in at 40, whereas Hunter's nine years his junior, so I think that could prove pivotal in the bout. I just think it's hard to see a fight where uh, Povetkin wouldn't land his powerful overhand right or his signature left hooks at some stage. Um, although Hunter is quick, I think he will frustrate Povetkin, but I think... Povetkin's a patient boxer, like you said, the experience he's had, um, it's crucial really, and I think it's hard to see Povetkin not winning the fight, maybe points, but I think it'll be knockout later on. Yeah, I think I'm slightly leaning towards Hunter, I, I, it'll go the distance, I feel like Hunter on points, I feel it'll be, a, it'll be a good fight, but it could be a lucky punch in there, you never know, Povetkin is, they're both powerful heavyweights, but I think I'm leaning just towards Hunter. So then the fight you've all come to listen about is the main event. It's the clash on the dunes. It's Andy Ruiz Jr. against Anthony Joshua. It's a pick and match up once again. Andy Ruiz got the nod in the first fight, stopping Anthony Joshua. How do you boys think the fight will go this time round? I, I can only see this. I, I'm seeing a lot of pundits and people within the boxing world saying that Ruiz will take him again. But I can only see this fight going away one way. Obviously, everybody thought that the first time these two fought and Ruiz shocked everybody getting the win, but this this time around, watching the weigh-in yesterday, seeing AJ, looks he looks lean, and Ruiz coming in a lot heavier, I feel like Joshua could dance around this ring and take him out in the probably like four to six rounds. Yeah, I agree. I think Joshua's got too much to lose with this fight to not win, in a way. Um he had troubles in the background to the last fight, and that potentially is the reason why he lost. But I think it will sh- it will prove what kind of a fighter Joshua is. Uh, a lot of heavyweights, or a lot of the greats, have lost once, but never twice to the same person. I think uh, the shed of weight will prove a lot. I think um, well, Joshua has been critiqued recently. Well, not recently, last couple of years for having too much bulk, and I think the shed of the muscle. Um, and going back to the basics will just prove too crucial and I think Joshua will The thing for me is that some of the pundits from last time out who were saying Joshua would win in emphatic fashion are the ones who are coming out now saying that Andy Ruiz Jr. is stylistically all wrong for Anthony Joshua 
I think the same logic should go as the first time around. Yes, we were proved wrong, but Anthony Joshua still should have too much. It all comes down to really whether Ruiz does land and if Joshua can recover. Yeah, the pundits are really trying to cover their own back so they don't like they don't look like they've got it wrong again. But what would a defeat do to AJ's career? Um, it would be extremely damaging for his career, of course. But I think he could potentially rebuild, but it it would take time. If he does win, though, it changes the landscape of the division. He's back at the top. He can call for the winner of Wilder Fury. He can go and face Alexander Usyk. He can fight Dillian White. There's plenty of options, but defeat really would be crushing. There's talks of if a defeat, potentially um, Joshua retiring. Well, how do you think about that, Joe? Because that just, to me, it goes against what Joshua stands for, his upbringing and how he's came from the bottom all the way to the top. Well, I think his bank account wouldn't complain. He's well set in terms of money. But as you say, he is all about his kind of legacy and the legacy he leaves. If he does just quit, it's not really in him. He went back to the slums in Nigeria and Lagos recently and rejuvenated himself. So I think that could prove pivotal in the contest with him drawing on that experience for motivation when it comes down to it. Yeah, it'd be the easy way out to just retire if he loses again, but... Like you said about his legacy, you can't see Anthony Joshua. Like if he does lose, retiring, you could see him wanting. You'd have the fight in him to try and build back and come up to be the heavyweight champion again. Also, with people labeling this as one of the biggest upsets in boxing history, the first time around, you've got to think this kind of thing does happen. Buster Douglas knocked out Mike Tyson. Hasim Rathman stopped Lennox Lewis, and Ken Norton defeated Muhammad Ali. So it does happen even to the best. And if Joshua does turn it around, then you could hear some people making the claims that they were doing before that first fight. And um, What are your opinions on uh, Ruiz's likableness? Like, obviously, Tyson Fury, he likes the, uh, the back chat and all that hype around the fight. But obviously, Ruiz is likable, he's humble, he's re- both fighters are respectable. What are your opinions on him as a person and a fighter? Is he, is he likable? Do we like him? Um, he's very humble. He doesn't come out with brash statements. Don't know if I like him, but he is a very good boxer and he does come to fight. And that's kind of what we should expect from our boxers. We don't really need them to hype the fights too much. Yeah, they do need to sell it, but really their job is to box. And so far he's done a very good job at doing that. I like Ruiz because he's what I think boxers should stand for. You don't see him on billboards, advertising watches or anything like that. He's He's a true fighter. He's crept out of the shadows of boxing and fought his way to the top. And I like this, the fact he is humble. And I think that's what more boxers should try and follow. Well, for me, um, like Joe said, um, the promoters are there to promote the fight. I don't, I'm don't. i not really too interested in the fighters having like, a massive personality. I just want to see like good quality boxing. And yeah, Ruiz has won 33 fights. He's not like... He's obviously got the quality, I mean, he beat AJ, but he's not the, the style which I like, so I, I'm not too fond of him, really. I don't dislike him, but I don't have, really have an opinion on Andrew Ruiz, but I hope AJ wins. So, another factor in the fight is the weight, and yesterday we saw the weigh-in with Andy Ruiz Jr. coming in 15 pounds heavier than the first time around, and Joshua around 10 pounds lighter than the first time around. So that's nearly two stone difference between the first fight and this one out in Saudi how do you think that affects the fight well AJ's got a real clear plan he wants to come in um, small light he wants to be fast he's got a game plan they thought Ruiz would come in smaller as well but he didn't he's in heavier but yeah AJ's got a game plan I think he's gonna he's gonna execute it perfectly I agree I think AJ's put the work in Um, I think he's been here before he's had to overcome the odds before I wouldn't be fooled by Ruiz. He's still got probably the fastest hand in sport, if not one of. Um, But I agree. I think Joshua's overcome the odds before. He's shed the weight. He's gone back to basics. And I think it's too good of him not to win. Yeah, initially, my thoughts on the weight was that I was extremely shocked that Andy Ruiz Jr. had come in even heavier than the first time around. People said that he was that heavy the first time around because of the short notice of the fight. I've as a boxing person, I knew already that he is kind of a bulky guy, but I would have thought that he would have had a bit of excess weight because of the short notice, but this time round he's even heavier. 
I was shocked by that, but I and I didn't really understand why. But having thought about it, when you think Joshua is going to try and box on the outside and try and move and then clinch when they get up close, the extra weight could help Ruiz in those clinches, possibly to dominate in on the inside, which is where he should be stronger as the shorter fighter. So I think that's interesting, and I think Joshua should be a lot more athletic and agile as the lighter boxer, and I think it does suit Joshua more. What do you think would be... Not necessarily better but for boxing, but would like to see in the future. Obviously, if Joshua wins a potential showdown with Wilder, but if Ruiz wins, it's a new a new champion, a new man at the top. What do you think of that? I think the AJ win is definitely what people want, because if AJ doesn't win, we're very unlikely to get the Tyson Fury fight or the Wilder fight. You, like like we said, you might you could even retire. Like people, I don't think people really want to see Andrew Ruiz fight Dillian White. People would rather watch AJ fight Dillian White. You have to think we're looking at this from a British perspective as as us as journalists. And if we want to cover the biggest fights, we likely want to see those in Britain. And I think Joshua, with the draw he has and the power he has, I think he can bring some of the biggest fights in the division back to the UK. So for us, I think the best thing would be a Joshua win. And then we could potentially see Wilder come over or an all-British fight against Tyson Fury. Talking about the the last fight between these two, where Ruiz got the shock win, AJ didn't seem ready for that fight. Obviously, it was late arranged because Jarrell Miller um, pulled out due to drug charges. But what did you think about the first fight? Um, It was a big stylistic change from the big um, Jarrell Miller, over 300 pounds. I know Andy Ruiz is a big dude himself, but Jarrell Miller is colossal, really, in size, and he's meant to come forward. And he was a little bit taller than Andy Ruiz by a couple of inches. So the style change would have affected Joshua. But there was a lot of rumours about the camp and things that went on. And possibly we'll find out at a later date what really happened. But there was definitely something where Joshua was off. Do you agree, Matt? Yeah, I agree. I I do agree with behind-the-scenes things. But I think it's also... You might disagree, but I think Joshua's up for the fight. But he's never completely took it as serious as he, as he should. He saw Ruiz in front of him with his flabby physique, if you like. Um, and I think he just saw the size of a man and thought, that I've got this in the bag. I think he accepted that in himself that he was going to be Andy Ruiz Jr. I think he thought he was a far better fighter than Andy Ruiz Jr. He saw just recently before his bout that Deontay Wilder stopped Dominic Brazil in brutal and clinical fashion and I think he wanted to replicate that himself against Andy Ruiz and when he did knock him down in that third round he tried to jump on him and it just didn't work for him he got caught and then he never recovered so I think this time round if he goes in and he tries to hit him with the same shots that he did at the start and with clinical combinations then later on he can follow up on that and really put a beat down on Andy Ruiz Jr but if he does engage in a brawl too much he could just well get caught again. It's evident the difference between the first fight and this fight. The, the weighing of the first fight, um, AJ was like, well, he obviously was a bit heavier. Um, he was he was laughing and joking around when he was there yesterday's um, weighing. He looked a lot more serious. He had his headphones on. He look he looks like he's got a game plan. He's ready to execute it. But I do like the change of Anthony Joshua that we've seen since the defeat before. When he was undefeated, he was like the face of Britain. He was like the, the clean-cut guy. He he was very well media trained. But since the defeat, he's come out, he's a lot more rash in what he says. He, he speaks his mind more. So I like this change. What do you boys think about it? Yeah, I think he was scorned by all the hate that he got hit by after the fight. Some of the people who were on the AJ hype train jumped off it immediately. And I think that kind of hurt him because he saw how fickle some people are. And... I think if he can turn it around, then he's just not gonna. He's gonna be a bit more thick-skinned and just look after himself a bit more. I agree. I think the story of a good champion is always being knocked down and going back up and getting the belts again. Uh, I think it showed. Well, the media. He's the golden boy. Uh, he can do nothing wrong. Which, to be fair, he, he can't. He's very good. Um, but I think this this defeat, the first defeat in the long run, will do Joshua a lot a lot better. Than if he didn't lose. So, predictions for the fight. Who do you think is going to win it, Halen? I'm saying 
AJ in four to six rounds. Matt, what do you think? I'm saying AJ six to eight, I think. Personally, I think the majority of people would either go for Andrew Ruiz Jr. on, well, by knockout again, or they'd go Joshua on points coming in lighter. But I think Joshua should win on points or by a late stoppage if he's able to catch him clean. Personally, I think he will because he, he does have great punching power and he is very quick. So I think eventually he will land and the killer instinct will kick in again. But yeah, I don't know. It could be close. That's all from us today at the Weigh-In Podcast. We hope you enjoy the fight.